we're now going to see a new splash screen for our brand new NAS. It will see that the old the drives inside belong to an older NAS and the option for migration of data becomes available. Hi and welcome back and today I want to talk about exactly what happens when you pull drives from one NAS and install them in another. More precisely I want to talk about Synology NAS today. Now Synology has been around long enough that so many of you out there when you're buying a NAS right now in 2019 you may well have owned a Synology NAS for more than a you know five maybe even some of you a decade I know they've been around for quite a long time. Now a lot of the time you can actually remove drives from one Synology and install them in the other and as long as you get the drives in the right order depending on the RAID level that you go for Synology have a system whereby the newer NAS will pick up the existing RAID configuration and the existing settings and then carry on from those drives and it's by no means foolproof and I have seen the occasional example where it's not quite straightforward I'm talking about you guys out there that may be using an SHR Synology Hybrid RAID or perhaps you're using BTRFS and you're trying to migrate towards a NAS that doesn't support it. So do remember these, these main rules. If you are using a Synology Hybrid RAID SHR, make sure you are moving these drives over to another NAS that supports it. Secondly, always try to upgrade upwards, never downwards. And by that I mean in terms of the CPU, try to get as similar as possible. Never go from a 64-bit chip down to a 32-bit chip. And moreover, of course, never try to migrate drives to a smaller NAS. I know that seems incredibly stupid that anyone would do that, but you would be amazed at the way people think about storage. So, two NASs that I've been talking about on the channel a lot recently are these two new, two new units from Synology. I've got the 1019 Plus and the DS2419 Plus. They've both got different CPUs, but they've both got Intel CPUs. Now, the three drives inside the 1019 are in a RAID 5 configuration, um, and these drives inside here we have used in multiple videos up until now. But, like I do for many videos, I need to utilize these drives in a newer RAID. So what I'm going to be doing is removing these physically and putting them inside this drive. Another little hot tip is a lot of the time the trays inside Synology NATIS are the same. In the case of these two, they aren't the same at all. They are slightly different. These are spring-loaded. These aren't. But in almost all cases, these trays will still fit. So I don't strictly advise you to do it this way, but I'm not going to bother removing the drives from the trays. Next thing to remember is you must, must, must power down your NAS before you transfer drives over and leave a suitable period of time for the disks inside mechanical hard drives such as these to spin down first. I advise around five minutes at least after the device is fully shut down. Also remember to shut down the device safely using DSM's uh, options by going to the top right and manually shutting the device down in advance. Once you've done that, make sure you take note of the drive numbers. In this case, one, two, three, four, five. And in this case, the drives are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. So remember to double check that because if you're using things like a RAID 5 or RAID 6, often drive numbers are important. It's less important in things like SHR, but definitely in a standard RAID configuration. So next, we'll start removing these drives. Now again, you should take the drives out of their trays before installing them in a new device. The only reason I'm not doing it for this video is it's just easier and keeps this video nice and short for you guys at home. Be sure that the drives go inside fully the way they're supposed to and once you've got those drives inside the new device, make sure they're inside properly. Again, don't worry too much about the old one for now. You can use a network backup. And now you can power up your brand new NAS. That's now going to power this bad boy up. And then what I'm going to do is give it a few minutes. And I'm going to make my way to the Synology Assistant software and show you guys how Synology's Assistant program and how this device becomes visible on the network. And the next stage in migrating your data and your apps onto your brand new NAS. Let's go. So on your desktop PC, make sure you've installed the Synology Assistant software. As we can see now the 2419's booted up, it's in migratable mode. Double click on there and make your way to the interface as you would your old NAS. But instead of the DSM loading up like normal, we're now going to see a new splash screen for our brand new NAS. It will see that the old the drives inside belong to an older NAS 
and the option for migration of data becomes available. We could reinitialize, but we may lose a lot of the settings and data. So for the people that want to keep their data, we select the migration option. Just like when we first set up the original NAS, you will be invited to install the DSM, which we can do by default, and the NAS will automatically download the latest version of the DSM 42419. While it installs Distillation Manager on our brand new NAS using the migrated data, we're going to fast forward and then make our way to the desktop interface. Once the device is rebooted, we'll be presented with the oh so familiar login screen for our NAS. Although we're on the 2419 Plus, because we've migrated data, the name of the NAS will still be whatever we called it before, in my case the 1019 Plus. Don't worry, you can change this in the control panel settings. And here we are on the desktop settings, and from here we should make our way into the control panel just to make sure that everything's gone correctly. As we can see on the bottom right, the server has still got the name DS1019 Plus. However, making our way to the control panel and checking the hardware options will tell a different tale. If we make our way down to the info center, we can see that this is the DS2419 Plus and it has all of the hardware inside. The data has been successfully migrated along with the RAID. If we go into the storage manager, we can see that our storage pool we created earlier is available. My error that I called it a RAID 5 when it's clearly an SHR should be ignored. But as you can tell, the drives have migrated over successfully and all of the files on that on those drives is successfully there as well as all three of the drives in our raid and there you have it it is that straightforward to migrate drives between one synology and another just remember the golden rules at the top of the video about the right ones cheerio and thanks for watching